Let's talk about side effects in programming. This is a term you've probably heard if you're coming from a background like React or some other frameworks. But what exactly does this mean? I'm going to be explaining what it means with examples in this video, and I'm not going to be explaining it in the context of React. Nope, I'll do that separately in my course. But in this video, I'm going to be explaining how this concept actually applies to programming generally, not just to frameworks. I'll be using JavaScript for the examples, but this same concept applies to other languages. Now, side effect is some something that you usually hear in the context of functions. Let's see what that means. Now to understand the idea of side effects, we need to understand what pure and impure functions are. So let's say I had this function here, sum, it takes two arguments, num1, num2, we add those two numbers and we return it from the function. Now here I use this function by summing 20 and 30. Now let me run this JavaScript file. I get 50. Now this is a pure function. And why is it a pure function? Well, that is because this function only depends on the two inputs that it receives. It has no business with any other thing. You give it these two inputs and it does what it needs to do with those two inputs and it returns an output. Since this function only has to deal with these two inputs, it means that if you give it the same two inputs all the time, it would always do the same thing. So if I come to this second part here where I use sum with the same input. If I run this, you see we get 50-50. You probably already see where I'm heading to, but let's look at another example. Here now I have a function called introduce. It takes two arguments, first name and last name. From that first name and last name, it generates this string and it returns the sentence. Now let's say we use this function here, introduce John. We run this, but we get hi, I'm John and my last name is Doe. This is also a pure function that entirely depends on these two inputs and the function doesn't do anything outside its scope. So if I come here and I use that function again with the same arguments, John as the first, Doe as the second, if I run this now, I still get, hi, I'm John and my last name is Doe. The function doesn't interact, depend or change anything outside its scope. Now the idea of impure functions is when you give something the same input but the output might differ or the function has external dependencies. Let's look at some example. Here I have a function called get random and here in this function we get a random number by using the math.random multiplying it by 10 and then using the math flow on the result now if i come here and i call this function without any input we get two now let's say i run this twice in my code now if i run this again the first time i get five and the second time i get two we didn't pass any input here and we didn't pass any input here but we are getting different results this already makes this function impure same input, well in this case no input, but different outputs. Let's look at another example of an impure function. So here I have a global variable called global owner and it has a value of decode. And then here I call this function saying print owner and then it creates this string, the owner is this. Then I assign the result to this result variable and I do console log result. And now if I should run this, well we get the owner is decode. But let's say I come out here and I change the value of the global variable and then let's say I call this function again. Now if we run this, what you see is we get two different outputs. The first one is the owner is decode and the second one is the owner is Jane. This is an example where the function is interacting with something outside its scope. In this case, this function is interacting with global owner and global owner was not declared in the function. No, global owner was declared outside the function. So this is a case of external dependency or outside scope. This function is now interacting with something outside its scope and because it's interacting with something outside its scope it now creates that possibility for the function to return different outputs even when you give it the same input here i have a function called add item to array it takes an array and then it adds this item to the array by calling array.push and then it returns the array now let's say we use this function here we call add item to array we pass this array and then we pass 100 when we run you see we have one two three four 100. But this is an example of an impure function because we're doing array.push, it is going to mutate this array. So now if I should use this again, I'm calling the same add item to array, passing this array variable with a value of 100. Now if I should run this, you see that the first result we get is 1, 2, 3, 4, 
400. And the second result we get is 1, 2, 3, 4, 100, 100. That is because when we call this function the first time, it mutated this array by adding 100 to it. So now that we are calling it again with array, what we are actually doing is we are passing 1, 2, 3, 4, 100. So how can we convert this to a pure function? Well, we can convert this to a pure function by avoiding mutation. So what we can do here is we can instead say new array and then we have array.concat and now I can return new array. By doing this, I have made this function pure because it is no longer mutating this. Instead, it is only taking this, concatenating it with this and then assigning that to this new array. And now even if I run this add item to array two times, I get the same result. And let's look at a few more examples. Here I have an example called get product. And what this function is going to do is to make an API request, maybe using the fetch library, Axios, or something else. But this makes the function impure. And the reason is because this function is now depending on an external dependency. If we used fetch here, it is going to depend on that fetch dependency. If we used Axios, it's going to depend on Axios. And this also means it depends on the server if the server should maybe the first time return name samsung the server the second time maybe due to a bug or a certain change can return name android this function doesn't really have control over what the server returns and let me show you one more example before i finally clarify what side effects are this function called get active tab we query the dom document or query selector and we get the elements with the class active tab and then we return that tab now it's possible with my run this two times with the same input in this case no input and we get different results again because this function is interacting with this which is coming from its outside scope and because the function doesn't have control over what the result might be this function is now impure it is affected by external dependencies and this is the difference between pure and impure functions now what exactly is side effects in all of this well side effects is usually seen as the effect caused by the execution of a function when we run this function here, it didn't cause any effect outside the function. Everything happened in this function the way we expected it to happen. And that's because the function is pure. But if we go to this part here where we are calling an API, well, this is a function that has a side effect. The side effect here meaning that the function caused something that is outside the function's scope. The same idea applies here. Because this function triggered something outside the function's scope that is a side effect imagine that maybe after you get the active tab you then do active tab dot class list and then you add a new class now this is a side effect caused from running this function because this function is now executed something that is outside its scope so a good way to understand side effect is when a function is interacting with external dependencies something outside its scope if it is not interacting with anything outside its scope then that function is pure it doesn't cause any side effect or effect as some people call it but when it is interacting with something outside its own scope yeah that's a side effect and do you also know that your console log is a side effect this is also an effect because console is not within the scope of this function console in this case is a browser api i have a video where i explained what browser apis are and how they are different from normal javascript i'll link it below and because this function is using this api API, this is now a side effect that would be triggered when this function is executed. I hope this helps you understand what side effects are and what exactly they mean in programming. Now, the reason why you hear side effects a lot in programming and some tools or frameworks showing you how to handle side effects is because just as we have seen, because the function isn't controlling everything that is happening within it, then it might cause some unexpected situations or unexpected results. And that is why these different tools would provide you with best practices on how to handle side effects. It isn't to say that side effects are bad things and pure functions is the only thing you should be writing as a developer. No, nope. pure functions can also be good, can be useful. Side effects can also be good and can be useful. I mean, when building applications, you always want to make API requests. So you cannot run away from side effects. But because these side effects can cause unexpected behaviors, then that is why you want to be more cautious when working with such functions. I hope you found this useful. The inspiration behind this video came from my React course, which I'm currently working on. I was just working on a lesson of side effect, and then I thought to make this video where I actually explain the idea of side effect before I explain.
explain how side effect applies to react specifically so if you'd like to check out that course and improve your react knowledge you can click the course currently on the screen or you can go to simplereactjs.com if you enjoyed this video please give it a like share with others and follow me for more programming videos like this